now I will stop talking. I am passing it to Jillian. Okay, great. Thanks, Ari. I am going to talk about the Chinese five elements and mostly how they relate to our personalities and our lives. And then I'm going to show you how to clear those with a pendulum. So now if you have one, now would be the time to get it. If you don't have one, you can use um, anything that's weighted and hanging like a, you know, a pendant type necklace. I have a this fancy bookmark that has a weight at the bottom, anything that's weighted and that will swing. Um, any, anything like that will work. A lot of people use their keys. Keys are really good when you're um, you know, out in public and you don't want anybody to know what you're doing. You wanna be secretive. You can use those. All right, so. Ari, if there isn't any quick questions, I think I'll just jump into it um, by sharing my screen, if that's okay. I have a PowerPoint that I'm gonna show everybody. Yeah, I think you should be good to go. Okay, great, thank you. Okay, so here we go. My company is Golden Means Crystal Reiki Energy Healing. I'm a, a Reiki practitioner. I work on animals and humans. I'm a crystal medium, a crystal healer, and I do several different kinds of clearings. And I also can pick custom crystals for you based on what your needs are. I'm not a doctor or medical provider. I cannot diagnose or cure. All this information is based on my opinion only. If you have a medical issue, please contact a medical provider. I have this, this special offer that Ari listed in the chat, but I also have it. It um, is for AZ members only and it, it does not expire. The Chinese element theory. Chinese medicine believes that nothing in the body can be understood without looking at the whole body. This body-mind way of thinking includes psychological and spiritual experiences. The Chinese five element theory is the foundation for Chinese medicine. They feel that everything works in a cyclical pattern, including our bodies in the world. And this theory, these Chinese five elements dates back to two or 3000 BC. Everything has a cycle. We as humans, animals, plants, seasons, days, basically everything in the world that's na nature or natural, you know, from the time we're born, we have the whole life cycle to when we um, age and become elderly and pass away. And then the whole thing starts over again. So the five elements are water, wood, fire, earth, and metal. And those five elements are associated with a lot of different things. I'm gonna give you a few of those things. Uh, water is associated with night, winter, and Directional north, the temperature is cold, death, pre-birth, Wednesday, and the time of day is 3 p.m. to 7 p.m. In numerology, the number would be number one. It's associated with your kidney, your bladder, your pinky finger, the colors blue and black, the emotion is fear, and the taste is salty. The musical note is A and the planet is Mercury. Wood, the wood element is associated with the morning and spring, directional east and windy, your birth and childhood time. The day is Thursday. The time of day is 11 p.m. to 3 a.m. And in numerology, it's the number three and four your gallbladder, your liver, your index finger, the color green. The emotion is anger, the taste is sour, 
the musical note is E and the planets Jupiter and Pluto. The element fire is associated with noon time, the summer south, directional south, the temperature's hot, midlife, and the day is Tuesday. The time is 11 a.m. to 3 p.m. and also 7 p.m. to 11 p.m. In numerology, it's number nine. It's your heart, your small intestine, your pericardium, your endocrine system, your middle finger, the colors red, orange, pink, and purple. The emotion is joy, the taste is bitter. The musical note is G and the planet is Mars. Earth element is associated with afternoon, late summer, early fall, the center, damp, and your middle ages. The day is Saturday. The time is 7 to 9 a.m. And Earth has three numbers in numerology, 2, 5, and 8. It's associated with your stomach, your spleen, your pancreas, and your thumb. The color is brown and yellow. The emotion is the overthinking. The taste is sweet. The musical note is C and the planets are Uranus and Saturn. The metal element is associated with early evening, late fall, directional west, dry, our old age time. The day is Friday. The time of day is 3 a.m. to 7 a.m. Numerology at six and seven. Our lungs, our large intestine, our ring finger, and the colors are clear, white, metallic, and gray. The emotion is grief. The taste is pungent. The musical note is D, and the planets are Neptune and Venus. So the elements, remember they have this cir circular cycle. So they create or nourish each other. So water nourishes wood so it can grow. Wood feeds fire so it can burn. Fire produces earth so it can be fertile. And the earth creates minerals that give us metals. Metal can enhance water by adding elemental minerals. The elements also control each other. Water can dampen fire by extinguishing it. Fire can melt metal by shaping it or weakening it. And metal can chop wood, by cutting or carving it. The wood can hold the earth, stabilizing it and controlling erosion. And the earth can also contain water in rivers and lakes and dams and such. Um, it's really important that we keep our elements in balance. Um, our elements can weaken or drain energy from each other if they're not in balance. If you have too much fire burning wood, it will burn your wood and then you'll have less wood. Wood uses water and then you don't have enough water. Water can weaken metal, causing it to rust. The metal can weaken the earth by mining and mineral extraction. Earth can weaken the fire by extinguishing it. We use less of the nourish cycle when you have too much of an element. This keeps them from fighting with another, which can have its own repercussions. It's, it's better to control. You don't wanna control fire with water too much because it produces a lot of smoke. You can weaken your fire with earth, with the earth element, and then you don't produce as much smoke. And less water would allow for stronger metal. Less mining allows for stronger earth. So it's like this, balance. You don't want to be constantly going in the counter. You want to stay in the balance. Um, so our elements relate to our personalities. The water type person is the philosopher, <clears throat> excuse me, or the sage, the artist, the baby. It's your feeling and thinking energy. It's also your being power. A person that has water strengths would have a lot of freedom. They would have inner strength and a lot of feeling emotions. They can be stubborn and creative. This person is your dreamer. They're very solitary and wise and gentle. 
If you're a water person, you may have difficulties with communication or fear, that paralyzing fear. Not, this is not anxiety. This is more true fear, fear that keeps you from doing something, fear of abandonment. You can be insecure, lack of trust, excuse me, and you can be lonely. If you are a water person, you may have health issues with your physical body, with your brain, blood, ears, adrenal glands, your bones, joints, hormones, bladder, and kidneys. You might have some psychological symptoms like controlling. You might be antisocial, have some paranoia, or seek, be secretive, intolerant, difficulty with discernment, vindictive, maybe suffer an imposter syndrome, risk taker or negative. Now, these are the things that are gonna show up when you're not in balance. And fixes to keep you in balance would be spending time alone, fun, facts, and future. Being and not doing. Water activities, the color black, so black can be in your clothes or in decorating your home. Exercise, dream time, hydration, embracing your lo and loving your ancestors or an ancestral clearing, being active, reading fiction, journaling, and trusting. The wood person is the trailblazer, the fixer. This person is the provider. And they're also the child, they're creative and they have active doing energy or doing is their power energy. Wood strengths, this person is very practical. They have common sense, they're organized, enthusiastic, driven, confident. They're active, adventurous, curious, idealistic, and kind. If you're a wood person, and you're out of balance, you might have difficulties with anger, depression, shame, blame, fear of judgment. Sometimes you might feel like a loser. You have a lack of forgiveness. You could be compulsive, lack of confidence and issues with authority. Some health issues you may have would be surrounding your liver, your gallbladder. You might get headaches, tension. You might have problems with your muscles or your jaw or GERD, like heartburn or something, problems with your eyes or your eyesight, addiction, ADD, and eating disorders. If you're out of balance, you might be competitive or defensive, have some aggression, be indecisive, passive, over-focused, procrastinator, ungrounded, or argumentative. Fixes for the wood person to stay in balance would be to get out in nature, to help a friend, have a clean diet, uh, water images, whoops, and sounds, yard work, get out and build something, singing. So remember, this is your doing power. So things that you would be doing, learning, the color green is important, exercise and schedules. Um, all of us have a little bit of every element but most of us will have maybe two or three that we're really strong in. Um, I'm pretty strong in earth, metal, and fire. I don't have a lot of water or wood, but I do have some. Everybody has some of all of them. So keep that in mind. And then you can still get out of balance in ones that you don't have a lot that's not really your personality, you can still be out of balance in that area. Um, Jillian, can I ask you a couple of questions that have come up? Sure. On that topic. Um, so you answered Natasha's, which is, do we all have all of the elements within us? Ethan wants to know, how would you find your element? How would you find the ones? Okay, well, by, you can find them by, listening to the um, types of personality. Like for instance, if you really resonated with the fire strengths and that's, you like all of that stuff. And when you're, you, you know, have problems with this stuff, you probably have some fire in you. There is some 
a fair amount of personal element personality tests out there. I spent a couple hours trying to find a really good one and I could not find one online. The best one that I've ever found is um, Jean Hainer's uh, Jean Hainer's personality element test and it's in her book called The Five Element Solution. I have not been able to find one that's good as that it's as good as that. Um, Maybe we need to make one, Jillian. Yeah, I took like six or seven of them the other day and they were all different. I got different answers in every single one. So it's really about what you resonate with the most. Yeah, okay. yeah. Um, I've heard some people think that the, your birth year um, as it associates with numerology can tell you your strongest element and it might like my strongest element is metal and my birth year, my birth year ends in a zero. So it's your, whatever your birth year ends in, that's the number you go with. And zero is a, is a um, metal one, but you know, just learning about what the personalities of each element are can kind of help you decide what kind of person you are. So this fire, is there, any, was there another question? Yeah, just real quick. Um, can yeah. your elements change or fluctuate and do you cycle through them at various stages of life? Yes, definitely, absolutely. Like for instance, um, the next element, the earth element is the mother element. And it's a very nurturing element. And we can all get into that nurturing mode when we need to. And so um, that isn't normally a mode that we're in when we're a child. Okay. You know, it's something that we come into when we're older, usually, typically, you know, you, you know what I mean? Totally. Um, we did just have one more question come in and then I'm going to stop questions for right now so you can get back on track. Um, well, actually okay. there's two. One is if somebody emails you, can they get a copy of these slides? Yeah, for sure. Perfect. Um, so we'll put her email in, Kathy, since you missed the beginning there. And then um, can numerology done through tarot be a way to get your number? No. Um, numerology is when you take you take your your birth date, like um, my birthday is September seventeenth. Remember any? I think we did this class a while ago, or you had a speaker where you add, you have to associate, oh, like September is um, the month nine. And then I, so I would add nine and one and seven together. And then um, I was born in 1970. So I'd add another one and a nine and a seven. And then I can get my number off the top of my head. I don't remember what mine is, but. So numerology is a little bit different and I don't think you can use tarot to find your number. You can, you can go with your last, the last number of your birth year, but then I would take your entire birth date and add all those together as well. I believe the numerology. So you get a single digit. Yeah. I believe the numerology class is on awkwardlyzen.com on the video page. So check that out. If oh, not, perfect. it will be soon. Perfect. All right. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you for answering all those questions. So we will stop in a little bit and ask more and you can get on with talking about the elements. Thank you. Okay, great. Okay. The next element is the fire element. And this person is the comedian, the lover, the optimist, the adult. They have a lot of communication energy and feeling power. This person is warm, affectionate. They have great communication skills. They have a lot of joy. They're positive, open-hearted. They're an emotional empath and they're passionate. A fire person may have difficulty with stress, fear of rejection, lack of trust, heartbreak. They may have ADHD, insomnia. They may get burnout, suffer from trauma, lack of joy, or hate. Health issues that this person might have 
could be associated with their heart or small intestine, their pericardium, which is the outer sac of your heart, your endocrine system, your metabolism, your skin, your speech, your nervous system, your brain, memory issues, panic attacks, and PTSD. Psychological symptoms you might suffer if you're out of balance would be that you're shy, fearful, you may have panic, addiction, you may be narcissistic, vain, or jealous, get overstimulated or be irrational. Fire fixes for balance would be a fireplace, sitting in front of a fireplace, candles, having a barbecue, having fun, getting out and exercising, uh, hanging out with your friends, expression, whether verbal or um, artistic expression, heart-centered activities, hydrating, sleep, getting grounded, beauty, the colors orange, red, pink, purple, and loving, and doing some things with passion and self-care. The earth personality, the earth element person, this is the giver, the peacemaker, the mother. This is your grounding energy and your helping power. Earth strengths would be in relationships. This person is kind and caring, responsible. They're the nurturer. You're devoted and practical, grounded, centered, honest, and agreeable. You may have difficulties because you have a hard time saying no. You're driven by guilt. You worry. You may have weak boundaries, lack of support, could be an emotional eater, and have anxiety. Health issues that you may suffer from would be associated with your spleen, your stomach, your pancreas, overeating. You might be slow to heal or have diabetes, issues with your breasts or your muscles your flesh, your sinuses, your mouth, or have chronic fatigue syndrome. Psychological symptoms would be you might be codependent, passive aggressive, selfish, hoarding, lack of confidence, neglectful self-care. You might be resentful, have a difficult relationship with your own mother. You may be a victim or a martyr and you might feel stuck in life. I think a lot of people can Associate with this one if they have children or if they are uh, having older children, you know. Earth fixes for balance would be self-care, cleaning, beauty, uh, water activities like baths or swimming, structure, expression, and that could be verbal or artistic expression. The colors yellow, brown, and gold, beige, eating root vegetables, gathering, exercising, getting grounded and setting intentions. Um, the last element is the metal element. This person is the alchemist, the humanitarian, the perfectionist. This is the father figure. It doesn't have to be male. It just means that you associate with that type of personality. The same with the mother. It's not, a mother is not always um, female just means that you associate with those uh, female properties or you might uh, lean towards that. Uh, metal is your intuitive feeling energy. This is your higher connection, that's your power. Metal strengths, this person is gracious, they're vig vigilant, they always do the right thing. They have a strong sense of purpose. They have an expansive view, they're detail oriented. They're authentic, conscientious, faithful, brave. They're also a physical empath. They're intuitive and they're rational. Now, a lot of people can have, a lot of people that are empaths are have metal and uh, fire in them. A fire person is an emotional empath. A metal person is a physical empath. And a lot of people are both of those. Um, you, if you're a metal person, you might have difficulties with anxiety. You might dislike small talk. You might be overly sensitive, suffer from exhaustion or person not get enough personal space. You might have grief, have an inability to let things go, low self-esteem and anxiety surrounding finances or money. 
some health issues you might have would be with your large intestine, your lungs, you might have allergies, skin or nose problems, immune system or autoimmune disorders, nervous system problems or OCD. Your psychological symptoms you might suffer from would, you could be distant, self-conscious, critical, sensitive, arrogant, controlling, unresolved grief, and overly concerned with cleanliness. Metal fixes for balance would be to keep schedules, to be creative and organized, have a lot of candles and fire, like fireplaces or outdoor fire pits, volunteer. Uh, your colors would be white and gray. So once again, this can be clothes that you wear or color that you decorate with or you know, do art with. Um, do some subtle energy work, wide open spaces, sacred spaces, space clearing, breath work, exercising, self-respect, organic foods, and letting go. Um, are there any questions before I move on to crystals? I don't think so. I think we're okay, good great. to go. Okay. I'm going to briefly just touch on elements in their corresponding crystals. So you could um, um, carry these crystals if you're this type of person, if this is in your personality, or if you're out of balance and you're trying to get a different element in balance. So your water crystals would be uh, blue or black crystals. And I just list a few here, Amazonite, Angelite, blue kyanite, blue lace agate. Um, a lot of crystals for communication and for grounding. You know, your obsidian, onyx, tourmaline, jet, and shungite. Your, whoops, your wood crystals would be um, your green crystals. Amazonite, again, can be green, apatite, moss agate, malachite's a great one, um, bloodstone, emerald, jade, tree agate. Your fire crystals would be the red, orange, pink, or dark purple ones, like carnelian, red jasper, sunstone, apricot agate, mangano calcite is one of my favorites, and the pink ones, rhodochrosite, rhodonite, and rose quartz. Your earth crystals would be the yellow, gold, or brown ones. Some agates are that color, amber, pyrite, citrine, smoky quartz, yellow jasper, desert rose is that um, creamy colored, fire agate or petrified wood. Metal elements would be the clear, clear stones, silver, gray, or white, like clear quartz, calcite, um, pearls, opals, diamonds, selenite's a great one, moonstones, scolocyte, mica, Pretty much, you know, the elements just go with the colors mostly. So I can answer some questions before we jump to the pendulums or we could just move right into pendulums. Uh, okay, I'm gonna, I can't see any questions in that but I cannot see everybody, so. If you have a question, I'm gonna be brave here and tell you to unmute yourself and ask a question. Is that better? Yeah, hold on, let me change the view. Jillian, can you repeat the name of the book and the author? Oh, um, where the quiz is? Sure, that's uh, Jean Hainer is the author, H-A-N-E-R. Her website is just www.jeanhainer.com. And the book is The Five Element Solution. Sorry, Mon, I thought I got that there. I miss her. That's okay, thank you. Okay. Okay, anyone else have a question? Yeah, Val. What's the difference between, you said emotional empath and I can't remember the other name, physical. The physical empath? Yeah. So the emotional empath, um, we feel the emotions and we don't necessarily associate them with not being ours. Like we'll take on those emotions. Um, when, you're, when you're connected to somebody, whether um, 
just an, an emotional connection. So you could be taking on those emotions and you're not even close by them. Or if you're sitting on the train next to somebody and they're really upset about something, you might start to become, uh, might, might start to feel that emotion as well. And then a physical empath, they can actually feel what the person is feeling, but they recognize that it's not theirs. Like, um, like I'm a physical empath. Like when I do Reiki, if I put, what happens is when I put my hands on you, I will get a pain in my shoulder if you're having shoulder issues. And that's how I know that I need to work on your shoulder. Um, things like that. Like I'll frequently, um, I'll also know, I'll feel those emotions. Like I'll feel my child's anxiety, but I know it's not mine. Like I know it's not mine. Emotional empath, that person, you're like, what's happening? Why am I so angry? Did that answer the question? That's actually a lot of people are both. A lot of people are both. Um, That was a great definition. Thank you. Uh, Ari wants to know, what are you balancing? If you are fire and you feel you need more, um, if you are fire and you feel you need more water, should you spend time with the water items? Yes, you can. Um, But you can also... I'm going to go back to this. I'm going to share my screen again. I'm going to go back to this other slide. Hold on a second. Um, can you guys see that? Not yet. Hold on. There we go. Nope. Maybe? Hold on. There we go. So our elements interact with each other a lot. Like this slide. You can see that like the wood helps the fire, but if you look at these arrows here, you can see that metal can interact with wood too, and wood can interact with earth. So when we want to keep our elements in balance, we use less of this nourishing cycle here. So if our fire is out of balance, we're gonna use less wood, wood type um, activities and possibly do more earth activities. But when you use a pendulum, when you use a pendulum, you can actually ask if you're if you have anything in that element that needs to be cleared or balanced. And then if you get a yes, then you can say, okay, I need to, I'm gonna clear and balance right now, but for me to stay in balance, I need to do some more of those other activities. Um, Oh, Valerie, when, yes, so if you're out of balance, say that you are out of balance with um, one of your elements, you're going to notice that, like, if if you are a wood personality and you're out of balance, you're going to notice that you have a lot of anger or depression and you want to be more you you don't want to have that anger and depression so you can maybe spend some more time doing earth things like getting out in in nature and working on your diet and um you know getting out and doing something like the wood person needs to get out and do stuff and a wood person doesn't like to sit still and just be so that those kinds of things would help you get in balance. Like if you are have too much wood and not enough of the other ones, or not enough wood, too much of you know sitting in the house and it's winter, being really depressed. 
Okay. Awesome, Jillian. Thank you. Okay. Let's let's learn about pendulums. Okay. Sounds great. I'm going to share my screen again. I will get back to my correct slide. Okay. So I like to use a pendulum for clearing and balancing because your pendulum can detect the subtle frequencies and vibrations of energy and elements. Um, you can connect with the vibrations by clearing and clear negativity or stuck energy, therefore repairing it and balancing it. Um, I really like to use a pendulum because it's almost, because you're really connecting with the left side of your brain and your higher self. You're getting these answers from your higher self. And a lot of times that's easier uh, than meditating for some people. It's good. Um, a lot of people get the same benefits from other kinds of divination as well, you know, um, runes and cards and tarot and stuff. So it's really important to use discernment when you use a pendulum and follow the rules of consent and be safe. So I don't ask questions that are not my business. And I don't ask questions about other people unless I have direct consent. Um, I always protect myself energetically. And however you do that is totally fine. You get to do your own protection, whatever works for you. And you find your center, you know, you have to be focused and relaxed and realize that you are in control of your pendulum. No one else is. It's your higher self. And that's the only, I'm going to say person for lack of a better term, it's only you that gets to give answers through your pendulum. No one else can give you answers or is allowed to, you know, and if just know that that's you, that you have all the knowledge, you're just tapping into it. Um, so here's some tips. Make sure re you're relaxed. Do not be attached to the outcome. If, if you're asking a question and you really want it to be a certain answer, it's probably gonna be that answer because that's what you're thinking of. That's what's stuck in your head. I really want this, I really want this. Like, so you have to be neutral. You won't get a correct answer if you're not neutral. Keep your question specific. Um, they have to have a true yes or no answer. Otherwise you're not gonna get a great response. And the answers you get are gonna be for right now, not two hours from now, not tomorrow, not next week, because there's different circumstances are, are changing all the time. So if you wanna know if you should take a flight next week, Right now, you, you might get an answer to yes, but there could be a whole set of circumstances that change between now and next week. And, you know, you could ask again right before you get on your flight and it says no. Not, not that I would normally do that. I don't normally um, <laughs> ask about that kind of stuff. You know, I don't rule my life based on the pendulum. You know, you have free will. You can make your own choices. You also don't have to listen to what the answers that you get. You get to make your own choices. Um, don't ask questions about other people when you don't have permission. That one is really important. It's not your business. Um, you know, you can ask questions about yourself, about your kids, when they're small, because you still are their guardian, you can ask questions or do a clearing on somebody that is unable to answer you. Like if they're in a crisis situation, 
you can say, is it okay? You can ask your pendulum, can I have permission to clear this person or to help this person with my pendulum? And it has to come from a heart centered place and it has to come from a good place. You know, like if you were wanting to do a clearing on somebody that was in the hospital and they were physically not able to, you were physically not able to get their permission. Um, those kinds of things might be okay. A pendulum will not work if the answer is based on something else happening first or not happening. Like if this, then that question, questions don't work because they're, the, because that's sort of like a chance, a 50% chance that it might happen. If there's a, a percentage that it may or may not happen, then you're not gonna get an accurate answer. I like to triple check my answers to make sure three times is typically the magic number. I will say, are you sure this is the right answer? Are you 100% positive that this is the right answer? Or with all accuracy, this answer is correct. Things like that. Um, that gets my own self out of the way. And it, may, and it lets me know that I'm not attached to the answer. Because if that third time I get a different answer, then I know that I'm getting in my own way. And I need to either clear myself, clear my head, or ask later. Um, let's see. So I think that I'm going to do this off screen and show everybody without reading. How does that sound? So I'm gonna stop sharing here. So I don't know if- If you're looking at all the different people, you might wanna to go to the top right corner of your screen and change the view so that you can see uh, Jillian bigger and beautiful as she is. Yikes. Yikes. Only keep one eye open. <laughs> All right, um, okay. So when I have my pendulum, I don't, I don't hold it from the very top. For me, that's too long and it, I feel like I can't control it. So I like to hold it. So it's just a little, there's hangs down a little bit. I like to drape it over my hand and kind of put my thumb on it. I also um, like to rest my elbow on something that keeps my arm from moving. And I get, I feel like I get a more accurate answer. So programming a pendulum for clearing is a little bit different. You have to be very specific. A lot of, a lot of you have probably read that you ask the pendulum what their yes is and what the no is, and then it gives you a movement. If you wanna do clearings, you have to have a very specific directions, very specific movement. So I tell my pendulum what to do. So I will say, show me up and down for yes. So then my pendulum is going to swing up and down, top to bottom or forward and back. I guess it's not up and down, it's forward and back, front to back. That's my yes. My you know is going to be side to side, left to right is a no movement. And you can tell your pendulum to do this. And then my diagonal left, so diagonal to the left is maybe or not sure. Diagonal to the right is it's not for you to know, not your business, or I'm not going to answer that right now. And then a, for balancing is going to be a clockwise spin like this. If you want to balance, or excuse me, clearing, disregard what I said, clearing is a clockwise spin. And balancing is gonna be that counterclockwise spin. So it'll, give me a second, there we go, counterclockwise spin. Um, 
I've and, been using a pendulum for I don't know how long, and it still every time makes me like giddy when it moves in the direction I ask it to move. You can, you can, there's lots of times where I'm, it's just barely moving. And I say, could you move a little bit more, make it bigger and it will. And then I can say, all right, that's enough. No. And it will stop. No, because I don't know why, because it just works. <laughs> um, but what was I gonna say? Oh, so when you first use a pendulum, I always like to make sure that it's not switched, that it is working properly. So I put my hand out like this. Let's see, can you see that? And I say, show me yes and show me no. And I'll flip my hand over and I wanna see the no movement. And then I ask, is this pendulum free of any attachments? Is it clear of any negativity and is it clean? So I kind of shorten it and I say free, clear, and clean. And if you don't get a yes, then you need to clean your pendulum if it's crystal. So if you're using something that's not a crystal, you may not need to clean it or clear it very often. And if I get a a no that it that it's not clear, I won't get accurate answers. And also if you're doing a long dowsing section using session using your pendulum for a long time and you start to get wonky answers or you're like, what? That doesn't make sense. You probably just need to clean it again. Because they'll they'll get full. And so with this is clear quartz so I can get it wet, I'll rinse it really quick. Um, most of my pendulums are the type of crystals that you can get wet. Yes, I, and, um, yeah, what's my next, what did I want to say next? So you can also use a pendulum, uh, to find things find lost items, you can do lots of things with it, but I'm gonna focus on the clearing. And I can show you how to clear all of the elements if everybody likes. And then afterwards I can do a room clearing, a whole clearing. And then everybody should be able to do this on their own afterwards as well. So the first thing I ask, um, before you clear your elements is to clear disturbing effects of others. Your disturbing effects of others are the negative, it's the negative or stagnant energy that you come in contact with every day, whether it's just being in somebody else's space, being in your workspace, um, being in traffic, all those little things that sort of will drag you down a little bit. Um, it's really good to clear that stress and tension at, every day. I will do it um, if you've had a disagreement with somebody or if you've had an argument or you've been at the store and you encountered somebody that just really got you going. Um, I have a friend that her keys are on a chain and I will see her sitting at, um, our kids play basketball together. She'll be sitting there at a basketball game and have, her keys in her lap. And I know that she's clearing disturbing effects of others because of the stress and tension that is going on with the parents yelling at the refs and the stuff like that. And we can do that. You know, I've sat there and done it in traffic after somebody cut me off and I'm like, okay, I need to let that go. I don't want that in my energy space anymore. So with that, the first thing you're gonna say is, do I have disturbing effects of others to clear? And if your pendulum says yes, then you say, please clear disturbing effects of others and let it do its thing. And then when it's done clearing, it'll go back to the yes, um, yes motion. 
And then the next thing you're going to ask is, do I have wood element to clear or balance? Most of the time, we're going to get a yes. So then you're going to say, please clear my wood and balance. So it's going to do a clockwise or clockwise motion to clear. And then when it's done clearing, it'll do the counterclockwise motion to balance. So this is what you would do with every element. So the water, water, wood, fire, earth, and metal. You would ask the same thing. Do I have fire element to balance or clear? So my mind's pretty used to me doing it. And a lot of times it'll just go into the clearing once you get used to it. And sometimes it'll start doing it before I've even said anything. Now you don't have to say this out loud either. If you have that thought in your head that that's what you're, you know, that's the element you're going to do next. Sometimes it'll just start moving in, in, into that clearing or that balancing. And then when you're all done, what I like to do, and I actually do this with any sort of dousing section session, whether I'm just clearing my chakras or my elements, I like to integrate and ground. So I tell my pendulum to integrate and ground this dousing section session. And it will go into that clockwise motion again. And one of the ways that you're going to know that you are out of balance or you have a lot of things to clear is a particular in a particular element is because it's going to take longer. And the first time you do it, you may have, you know, a lot of different things. And if you keep doing it all the time, it may go quicker. And when you clear stuff, you're clearing layers. So it, you can't, if you have a lot of things, let's say you have a lot of issues with your father. So that would be in your metal element. You're, you're going to be able to clear just one or two things at a time. And so then the next time you clear, you might still have stuff left in there. And that's okay. Don't do like 10 clearings in a day because you're, you're gonna end up having some, some physical or emotional issues surrounding that. Like if you have a lot of junk somewhere you, you are releasing and same if you've ever had a really big clearing with your chakras. I don't know if any of you've noticed like you'll have a big emotional release or you know you might have a big headache or something. It's gonna be the same with elements. Your body is opening up those meridians and it's gonna be releasing some of those toxins. So you may end up with a headache. You may end up in the bathroom a couple times or just kind of feel tired or drained. So that's why you don't want to do, do big clearings in succession or a lot of them all the time. You know, I do it like, I probably do it now every few days, but when I first started doing it, I waited a little bit. I would do one and then I'd kind of let things settle so be aware of that. You might have heightened emotions. You might be achy or tired. And that is really your body getting rid of those toxins. Um, when I do it, I, I clear the elements on my dogs. I have two rescue dogs and they have a lot of past trauma. And so I have to be very mindful about when I do it, making sure that I'm going to be home because they always, I don't do it at night either. I do it in the morning because they always end up having to go outside extra times. 
um, you know, because they get some GI distress. So, you know, if you're on vacation, don't do a big clearing. Do it before you go. <laughs> um, oh, Valerie said, how often would I suggest doing clearings? You know, it, it kind of depends on what, how you're feeling. If you're feeling like something's stuck, if there's some things that you want to get unstuck, um, something that you want to work on, you know, if you want to work on your communication, you could, you know, be clearing, um, be clearing those elements a lot more, you know, because once again, you're just clearing elements. If you have problems with trust, you could clear your water element, you know, every few days, that kind of thing. I like to do all of them at once. I don't just do one. Can um, you share the screen where you showed the um, how you need to program your pendulum? Yeah. Thank you. That one? Yep. So do you guys know how to do a print, um, like a screenshot? It's, it's control. You hit control, and then you hit print screen up at the top next to your on my keyboard, it's next to my delete button if you have a computer and it takes a screenshot. I, it doesn't actually show up on my computer when I do it, but when I go into my documents, it will, it'll show up in my files that I did that. I don't know if that's helpful for anybody. If you have a Mac, it's command shift four, and then you have to highlight what you want to take a picture of. Okay, that's a lot. Um, this one's helpful too when you um, checking, make sure that you check that your pendulum is not switched and it's clear. I'm, I'm not kidding that you will not get good answers if your pendulum is not clear. There's plenty of times where I've been trying to do it and I forgot. And I'm like, what is happening? What do you mean that this is not right? Not right. Or if your pendulum does nothing, if it just hangs there and won't move at all, then you probably need to clear it or get out of your own head. So, um, these are the directions if anybody wants this one. And then for two, three, four, and five, you just do the same thing. Oh, and I forgot to mention, I usually will yawn or have a large sigh if I have something big to clear and I've finished. That's almost my cue that I have just finished. I don't know if that happens with, I think it happens with other people. Yeah. Val is asking if it's important to do those in order. Um, I have seen them always done in order. Now in the beginning, I would often get them mix, mixed up and it didn't seem to matter. They are in written in order the way they um, interact with each other, but but, but, but I don't think but, it matters that much. Ooh, that was fancy. Um, remember when you're done to integrate and ground it. Otherwise, you've just done it in vain. You know, like you need to solidify that and make it as permanent as possible. Jillian, are there any, um, I mean, I you said that if your pendulum's just sitting or something like that, you might need to clean it. Uh, clean it or do that. Is there ever a time that you get like a clear now's not the time to do a clearing? Yeah, for sure. Or I'll be, at, um, I'll be asking a question. And if it does nothing, then I'll say, is this for me to know? Or is this for me to do right now? And I'll usually get no, you know, okay. Or you can say, can I, should I try this later? And usually you'll get an answer. 
if you're not in a, a, a relaxed place or you're too attached to the outcome, your pendulum might not work for you because your higher self is saying this is not a good time. So, and here's just some of the emotions you might have or feelings. I definitely usually feel better the next day. You know, like I sh shedded a bunch of junk. Um, and yeah, so I can do that group clearing if everybody wants. Uh, that last part felt like a commercial for a new medication or something. The side effects may be. <laughs> <laughs> I just want everybody to know. I mean, it's like that if you, if you have a Reiki session or anything as well, that you'd be releasing some toxins and you might feel funky. Um, but yeah, there's lots of, lots of different things also that you can do with a pendulum. You know, I've found lost keys. I found my wallet. I've, I use charts to find um, names of things. You know, I was able to find the names of my guides by using the chart. Um, like I was thinking about different foods that I should or shouldn't be eating. You know, and if you have a, a alphabet chart, you can spell that stuff out or you can just write them all down, you know, write down, you know, if you're wondering about something regarding your health or, you know, should I buy the blue car or the green car or how about no car? Do I need to just stick with my beater right now? You know, different, different things like that. I also have, I don't know if you guys can see this, but I have um, stones that represent all the chakras and I'll use a pendulum and have it circle the ones that I need to balance on my chakras. And that is immensely helpful. Yep. You can use a pendulum to get rid of stuck energy in your aura. You know, you can, you can take your pendulum and swing it around. I use it on my dogs. If they have a hot spot, I'll just tell the pendulum to show me where their, where my dog is having issues. And I just go all across their body and it will swing differently when I hit that spot. And then I ask to clear it from them. And then I'll usually do Reiki on that spot. I have different, you know, there's, you can get all different kinds. A lot of people like metal ones. I like the crystal ones because I'm a crystal person. I have a rose quartz one when I want to do uh, pendulum work regarding my heart or, you know, motions and stuff. I have a smoky quartz one that I use to clear for room clearings, you know, and I'll, um, I'll ask if there's negative energy in the room. I'll ask the pendulum and then I'll clear it from the room. I have a one that I use for Reiki, it has all the Reiki symbols on it. That one's pretty cool, but yeah. It's very cool. So I, do you guys like a room? It's also, uh, before you go there, Jillian, it's also good to remember though, just like Jillian said at the beginning, you don't have to have all the pendulums. You don't have to have a pendulum at all. You can use anything that swings like How that. about my bookmark? You could use my bookmark or a necklace yeah. or yeah um necklace. Has, some people has, tie tie something on a piece of string what uh, you have there val val necklace? wanted to talk about meridians okay so she said do elements affect uh or relate to meridians absolutely absolutely um clearing your elements can free up any stuck spots in your meridians just like 
clearing your chakras can help your meridians flow better for sure. And you can actually, um, by clearing all your elements, you could actually take your pendulum too and go all over your body and find any stuck meridians or find any spots that need to be um, cleared. Yeah, the, pretty much everything according to Chinese medicine relates to the elements. You know, the whole cyclical stuff and yin and yang and your meridians and it's one big happy family. Now, before you do the room clearing, um, I am putting your information over on the side again. Will you just briefly talk about um, what they can expect if they if they book a session with you? If they book any type of session or a clearing session? How about a clearing session? Then they can clarify the rest of those with you. Okay. If you booked a clearing session with me, we would have a Zoom call. And we would talk, I, first I would ask you about, you know, why you wanted a clearing. Was there something going on or did you just want a general clearing or, you know, let's focus on something. And then I would clear, if I did an element clearing, I would clear all your elements and integrate and ground it. And I would tell you where you had areas that needed extra clearing or areas that needed balancing and some things that you could do to keep those things in balance or to get them to stay in balance. Because once you do a clearing, you're, unless you start incorporating some of those other things in, in the other elements. Okay. Uh, and what other things do you offer? Just a reminder. I know you said it at the beginning, but just so everybody remembers. Um, well, other types of clearings I do are chakra clearings and space clearing. And I do traditional Reiki and I do crystal Reiki and animal Reiki. And also um, I can have a phone call with you. And if you're having, you know, something that you wanna work on, I can pick crystals for those problems or issues. And um, then I would mail them out to you. Yeah. So custom, custom crystals. And I will say I did the custom crystal thing when we did the 1111 event. Um, and I, she was so great. My dad was going through cancer treatment and we had to had to dig into the mental side of that and all of those things. And she helped figure out crystals that um, my dad begrudgingly uh, accepted into his life. Uh, <laughs> they might have gone under his bed with <laughs> only a little knowledge, but it worked out really well. So thank you for that. And I am super excited to book an element, elemental clearing with you and work with you on that. Um, all right. So you're going to clear the room. Yeah. Okay. So I'm going to start with um, asking my pendulum. Tell me yes, show me no. Is this pendulum free, clear, and clean? Does this lovely group of people have disturbing effects of others to clear? Please clear disturbing effects of others. Does this group have water element that needs to be cleared and balanced? Please clear and balance water element.
Does this group have wood element that needs to be cleared? Please clear and balance wood element. Does this group have fire element that needs to be cleared? Please clear and balance fire element. Please clear and balance earth element for this group. Please clear and balance metal element for this group. Please integrate and ground this session. Thank you. I always give gratitude to and thanks. That's really important to me. All right. We're all done with that. Awesome. So everyone drink lots of water uh, and get some rest and, and be ready just in case, just in case. Um, Jillian, thank you so much. That felt really, really good uh oh, everyone else have fun did you enjoy that the feeling of that allowing that to go um super awesome. relaxed yeah totally you have such a soothing voice too so that does not hurt <laughs> um i love it 
All right, so thank you so much for that. And again, I'm gonna put the contact information over in the side there. So if you want to, and then could you put your email over there as well, Jillian, if people wanted to get a copy of your slides. Um, we used yeah. to do that through me and I learned that lesson a long time ago. I'm not gonna be the middleman, they can work with you. Um, so if they want a copy of that, and then Jillian is also a lovely member of Awkwardly Zen um, and she's on awkwardlyzen.com. So you connect with you can connect with her there as well. This recording will be up on the website as soon as we get to it. So uh, patience and grace as we do that, but uh, know that it will be there um, as soon as we can get around to getting everything up, uploaded, downloaded, whatever is the right word, I never get it right. Um, other things coming up, we have Zen Zoom tomorrow at two o'clock. Sophia will be running the party on Friday afternoon. Uh, on Saturday, we have a partner event. Lori Hewitt, who's one of our amazing practitioners with Awkwardly Zen, will be on Kendara, who's another amazing practitioner on her meetup. So you can see that on the um, Awkwardly Zen meetup page. Uh, we also have... I can't remember exactly what it's called. Ask Mo some questions. Mo is this amazing dude who's been doing all the metaphysical things for like 50 years. He has huge amounts of knowledge. He has amazing stories and he loves to tell them. So bring your metaphysical questions and be ready to ask Mo whatever it is that you've been thinking of. And he will be very blunt. Um, Jilly did 20 screenshots of your, your presentation here. I like it. Uh, and then Sunday we have the arty party. So if you like to just hang out and do some art or journal or doodle, whatever you want to do, or just hang out, um, it's a fun group to do that with. So be watching for that. Um, again, awkwardlyzen.com, easy way to connect with one another. And it has all of the information I just gave you on it. Um, thank you so much, Jillian. We are so grateful. Uh, and that was such a huge amount of information and you did it so beautifully. So thank you. Thank you. And I love you. And, uh, we're ending a little bit early, but we're going to be okay with that. So Jillian, if you'll stay on for just a second. Yeah. Thanks everyone. Fabulous, fabulous night. And I'm going to stop the recording.